today we are going to cover how we can all stop spending on self-care and skin care and whether in fact those two things are connected because in my mind not always I'm going to also share what are my points of self-care let's go At this time, I feel like I've still got cucumber residue all over my eyes. Have I? Let me check. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay, we're good to go. I've not got cucumber juice on my eyes. They feel very refreshed though. So, we're going to talk about when I think of self-care nowadays, because of all the recent ugh, coverage on the media about what self-care is, I feel like it's very cleverly marketed to us the idea that spending a ton of money on skincare is what self-care looks like and i don't necessarily believe it does mean that or that we have to so we will start with the skincare to begin with first of all as a minimalist i barely have any skincare and what i actually like to do to not completely say no to skincare is have one product at once like i've been telling you throughout this whole 31 days of auditing my life where i previously used to have a huge coffee collection of lots of different coffees that i wanted to try i limited it to trying one coffee at a time so that my cupboards weren't full to the brim with coffees i do the same perhaps with some kind of eco-friendly shampoo i try one at a time and moisturizer is no different so for instance last month i was trying the dr pawpaw shea butter balm which was a multifunctional balm i'll show you all what i'm trying this month as my one skincare thing that you could call self-care but it's one item instead of the 20 that they're telling us all that we all need which really i believe just does the complete same job which is just moisturizers to a degree of having moisturized skin we can't possibly absorb 10 layers of moisture let me show you what I'm using. I have been using the Pixi Rose Flash Balm. Vegan, cruelty free, three in one moisturizer, primer and mask. You can whack a load of that on with your cucumber pieces if you want and use it as a skincare mask. You can use a little bit under foundation or tinted moisturiser if that is what you wear or you can just have it as a good old fashioned moisturiser. It can even go just on the points that you want it to such as the really dry parts of our body like elbows and knees. They're some of the main parts that most of us want to moisturise. I'm enjoying trying it. It is, it is radiance boosting. It's got all kinds of nice ingredients in it I'll include them on screen but that is my one little bit of skincare and perhaps what some people might call self-care if that is what skincare equates to now just while we're on this point of skincare I wanted to also say the reason I'm also okay with only having this one thing is I know that many of us are a little bit botanically minded in the minimalist community and rightly so because a lot of these things contain plants or they should if they are really good for our skin and not toxic for our skin we can do that at home ourselves so for instance I will make scrubs out of household items that we have in the kitchen out of coffee grounds out of Himalayan rock salt out of sugar out of banana skins as you saw a couple of videos ago there are all kinds of things we can use for exfoliators things we can use for hair masks such as yogurt honey aloe vera it's a quick little google and you will find a host of products available to you especially if you have some essential oils as well so for instance doing a eucalyptus steam bath on your face is really good for your skin opens all your pores and also peppermint scrubs for your feet a little bit of peppermint essential oil with some of the products that i just said rock salt or sugar with a little bit of peppermint oil great scrub for your feet so we can find all these things for skincare largely in our Home. we can obviously use coconut oil and things for our skin but if you like me and you don't really like oil on your face that is why I usually have some kind of balm or lotion or cream that is for my face now 
let's not always think that skincare does mean self-care or that self-care does mean skincare because to me self-care are some small things and if we think of it more as small simple pleasures it becomes not expensive we're not spending a ton we're saving money and they're quite nice things that might even be good for us and actually be self-care to me self-care is a luxury item that isn't necessarily expensive but it feels a luxury to me because it's not something as a minimalist or even now especially a frugal minimalist that I indulge in because I usually would find it extravagant. For instance, let me show you the next things. So these two things are what I would call a self-care luxury item to me. I am not in the habit of buying fruit that comes from far away, as I mentioned a few videos ago. I like to buy locally sourced things, it's better for the planet, it's also probably therefore better for you because it's fresher. However, there will be an occasion where I come across a fruit, usually in Marks and Spencers, I know that they are at least ethically minded and eco-conscious, and if I come across a fruit that I have not tried before, even if it is a little bit more than I would usually want to pay for fruit, occasionally I will treat myself to a fruit. I got this dragon fruit, to be fair it wasn't that much money, it was £2 for one fruit, but I would consider that in UK standards quite expensive, but I was shocked when I found out how much some of you guys pay for avocados, sort of $6 for an avocado, and I think even in Japan, I think it's the equivalent of $6, it's unbelievable. This country, not too bad, however, the odd piece of fruit does sometimes feel like a bit of money, but it's an experience and it's good for you and it makes me feel like I have kind of treated myself to something small, which is a frugally minded act of self care. I've got a YouTube short coming up on this soon. Well, I say soon, a few weeks, because I've planned lots of YouTube shorts for you guys. Hopefully you'll find them interesting. The next thing is a candle, because most of the time I make my own candles, and although I love making my own candles, it is occasionally nice to find one that has a nice blend of essential oils that I just decide to treat myself. And I recently found this rose and jasmine candle that is pure soy wax and pure essential oils and it's obviously in a tin nearly so i just really enjoy you know it being prepared for me instead of me making this candle myself feels like a small act of self-care that was two pound that was two pounds and obviously i could use them all in one night or i could use them on separate nights but when i when i like that when i eat that i get a little sense of self-care something that i've done that is for myself that i am going to enjoy and it hasn't been 10 50 pound pots of the latest face cream or serum or mask or eye gel costing me 500 pounds it's cost me four pounds. We need to stop equating self-care to skincare and we definitely need to stop thinking we have to buy all these things to do with self-care or that self-care means buying yourself that latest £1,000 bag. It doesn't. It can be small things and if we start to change our thinking about what self-care truly is, it can stop us wasting money and save us money. Now what is the act of self-care that I've also been doing every day? Although it is not enjoyable, it is fun and the reason it's not enjoyable for me is it doesn't taste great in our house as I've said many times because we have hard water and even though we have a filter installed it still doesn't taste great but I'm doing it as an unenjoyable act of self-care, drinking the water. Let's go. Are we ready? <clears throat> Thank you. 
Not sure how fast that was today. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get under 16.97, which is my record so far, but we will see. We still have just over a week left of this 31 day audit where I have been considering changes that I can make to my minimalist life, my lifestyle for the better. See you all tomorrow. Bye.